And I'm deeply grateful to them all. <laughs> when I think of the years that I watched these awards, and to think that I'm standing here now, it, it's too much. All I can say is, this is the best night of my life. <laughs> hey, they're coming off stage now. Get them both together as they come through the door. Okay. Come this way, please, Miss Harrington. Uh, Miss Channing, you too must have a picture of you with this year's Tony winner. Uh, maybe I can get her autograph. There we are. Needless to say, the one to whom I owe the most is Margot Channing. Not only a great actress, a legend in her own time. Damn it, Eve, I'm not dead yet. I'm really grateful to my director, Bill Sampson, my author, Buzz Richards, my producer, Howard Benedict. She's full of humility. I should give out pieces of this Tony to everyone in the whole cast. She's full of generosity. Oh, heart was pure chance. It just happened. She's full of it. Now, can we have a shot of the two of you embracing? Of course. You let her hide, you dummy. She's done it again. Thank you. Thank you. Let's wait for you. Eve, you know something? I really do admire you. I don't exactly approve of your methods, but they certainly got you where you wanted to go. How many people would believe what really happened? I can hardly believe it. But of course, I've got all those colorful knife wounds in my back to remind me. Can we have a couple more shots, Miss Channing? <laughs> of course, why not? Tonight, learn the call. In applause. It all started on my opening night in the friendly arrangement, a year and a half ago. It was the beginning of the theatrical season. But what I didn't know at the time was, it was also the beginning of open season for me. Magic Buzz. Yeah, thanks, but let's hear what the critics have to say. <laughs> Congratulations, it was just great. Thanks. Did you hear those laughs tonight? You know, I never can believe those funny lines are written by this undertaker I live with. <laughs> Karen, I wish you'd sit next to me on opening night. Oh, Karen, you spend the whole time in the men's room. There, great. Well, how do you do it? Your third hit in a row. Ah, uh, directing is simple. Find a great play, a great star, and then sit back and take a nap. Excuse me. Uh, see you later at the party. No, I'm afraid not. I'm going to Rome tonight. Oh, if Benedict produces a play, it's like money in the bank. Oh, darling, congratulations. We're all going to get rich. Well, don't buy anything until you read the notice. Oh. <laughs> all right, everybody, out, out. Margo will see you all at the party. Oh, dear, oh. fine, Margo. You're so witty. Oh, thank you, Carla. But tell that to the author. I always see everything you do. I hope not everything. <laughs> Bill. 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 Margo. Bill. Star, 
The director is at your feet. <laughs> Absolute profession. Uh, Except you lost your biggest laugh in act two, dope, by moving on your own line. Yeah, there was that place in the second act. Yes, yes, I know, I know. I lost your biggest laugh. I'll tell you about that line. I choke on it. It reminds me and the audience I'm playing someone considerably younger than myself. You're sick, Margot. No, I'm 40. Margot, <laughs> I'm sorry about that late curtain in scene three. Oh, that's okay, Brad. Listen, Herr Director, since you've elected to abandon us tonight, I don't have to take one damn thing from you. Oh, Margot, enjoy this moment. The friendly arrangement is a definite hit in the lobby, and the alley is full of fans just pouring love out at you. Love? Little beasts. All they care about is trading autographs. I'll give you five Margo Jennings for one pearl belly. <laughs> They've never even seen me on a stage. Ah, one of them has. There's a girl out there who's seen every preview for the whole three weeks. <laughs> yes. I brought her back here to meet you. What? Dwayne. Oh, no, wait. I spotted her every night in the alley, half hidden in the shadows. Tonight she spoke up. Margo, this girl idolizes you. It's like something out of a book. You've got to... Karen, on opening night... Margo, make her happy. Receive her and let her kiss your ring. She spent her last penny to see you. Spent her last penny to see Margo Channing. The kid can't be all that. Come in, dear. Margo, this is Eve. Eve Harrington. How do you do? How do you do? This is Mr. Sampson, Hello. Mr. Richards, and Dwayne Fox. How do you do? Hello. I want you to sit down. Oh, no, thank you, really. I... Well, I'm just glad I have this chance to congratulate you all and to thank you, Miss Channing, for lighting up my life. <sighs> for saving it, really. Well, that's an extraordinary statement. Oh, but I mean it literally. Seeing you on the stage changed everything for me. Well, are you in the theater? No. But I love the theater passionately. For years, I belonged to our local dramatic society. We did Pinter and Albie. <laughs> But I never gave any thought to being in it professionally. Oh. Uh, where was all this? Uh, Madison, Wisconsin. I, I grew up on a little farm near there. I used to try to escape from it into the world of my imagination, making up things and acting them out. I... Oh, what I'm saying is silly. Please go on. Well... Uh, after school, I took a secretarial job. I met someone wonderful there who was also interested in the theater. A dreamer working in an office like me. And we got married. Well, soon enough, the outside world woke us up. He was sent to Vietnam. I went to San Francisco to meet him on leave. And I got the telegram that told me he was never coming back. Well, life was over for me. I went completely to pieces. I dropped out. I drifted aimlessly, half in a daze, not knowing who I was or what I was doing. I lost all contact with reality. Wow, it's like being back in group therapy. Wayne. Sorry. I wound up in New York, and then one night, some kid I know dragged me into a theater. Well, I knew your movies, but... It was the first time I'd ever seen you on a stage. I felt an energy and a vitality. It was like suddenly walking into the sunlight again. I saw you every night until the play closed. I came back to life. Well, I'm glad I've had this chance to tell you what you've meant to me. Goodbye. Now, I think this is the nicest opening night present I've ever had. Don't go, Eve. Stay around a while. Hey, Bill, aren't they waiting for you in Rome? You've got a plane to catch. Yeah. Well, let me go to the airport with you. Now, we've been through this already. I don't want to remember you in that neon light with your mascara dripping into your shoes. You go to that party. Goodbye, Bill. See you in three months, huh? Mm. Buona fortuna. Ah, mille grazie, signora. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, Mrs. Richards, I'll never forget you. Good luck. Yeah, Thank bye, you. Miss Harrington. Goodbye. Oh, well, uh, I really should wait outside. 
Oh, Bill, don't go. You said you have to direct that idiotic movie in Rome. I said. You keep forgetting some men have careers just like women do. You expect me to give it all up? Slave over a hot stove all day? But I never heard of such a thing. You know actors have to be watched like rotten kids. In a week, the play will fall apart. And so will I. Marry me when I get back. I'll think about it. You've been thinking about it for two years. Last chance to observe the merchandise. Classic profile, dazzling personality, talent, played triangle in his high school band. <laughs> Aren't you afraid he might get snapped up on the Via Veneto? Am I going to lose you? Not a chance. I'll get you something beautiful in Rome. Just don't get yourself something beautiful in Rome. Hey. You know, I love you very much. I know. Hey, don't eat too much pasta. I want to be able to get my arms around you when you come back. Come on, Pagliacci, baby. Got to get prettied up for the party. Oh, I don't want to go to another opening night party. What? I deserve a good time tonight. Dwayne, how would you like to escort two lonely ladies out on the town? I... I got a date. Bring them along. I was just going down to the village to join some friends. I don't know if you'd like it. We'll adore it. Eve, we are going to Greenwich Village. But it's opening night. You must feel exhausted. I'm too exhausted to go to the party. But I'm much too excited to go home to sleep. I feel groggy and weary and tragic. Punchy and bleary and fresh out of magic. But alive. But alive. But alive. I feel twitchy and bitchy and manic. Calm and collected and choking with panic. But alive. But alive. But alive. I'm a thousand different people. Every single one is real. I've a million different feelings. Okay, but at least I feel. And I feel rotten, yet covered with roses. Younger than springtime and older than Moses. Frisky as a la 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 la. Lazy as a friend. I've been recognized. I don't believe it. Here, I mean, did you open tonight the Buzz Richards play? Guilty. This is a historic moment. Oh. Oh, Dwayne, I'm spoiling all the fun. Shall I call the party and tell them that you'll be there soon? Don't go. Stay. Are you kidding? I'm here for the night! I feel wicked and wacky and mellow. Firm as Gibraltar and shaky as Jello, but alive. And 
I feel brilliant and brash and bombastic. Limp as a puppet and simply fantastic, but alive. But alive! But alive! Residence. Oh, it's Eve, Mr. Richards. Eve Harrington. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we've been looking for her everywhere. Where the hell has she been? Oh, yeah. We were ready to kill her until we read the notices. Oh, the notices? What happened? All horrific. Yeah. She got two glowings, <laughs> three brilliant, one. Yeah. and one incandescent. <laughs> Just tell her that God has been good to us. Oh, by that, I mean the New York Times. <laughs> good night. Oh, Miss Channing, that was Mr. Richards. They've been calling and calling the reviews. Oh, the reviews. They said you were glowing, brilliant, and incandescent. Lovely. What'd they say about Bill? It was great for everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Now I can buy that fun fur I've been laughing at. I'll put on the water for your tea. Put on your slippers. Oh, well, I'll get them. Thank you, Eve. Oh, tonight's been fun, hasn't it? <laughs> fun. The best night of my life is here. to be the greatest thing that's ever happened to me if i could freeze this moment and take it home with me i would i would but time goes by and though i know
Water's boiling. Uh, <clears throat> we had better cut out. Our disco darling has got to get her rest. <sighs> Can I uh, drop you someplace, Eve? Well, I know. Instead of tea, I wish you'd let me fix you one of our hometown toddies. It'll help you sleep. <laughs> that sounds nice, Eve. <laughs> It'll only take a minute. Good night, Dwayne. <sighs> okay, now drink your hometown toddy, watch the late show, and get some sleep. Good night, sweetheart. Oh, you really were something tonight, both on stage and on the pool table. <laughs> Thanks, but don't forget, without your magic fingers in my hair, I'd be nothing. <laughs> 1942. Somewhere in France. Good God. Another Margot Channing festival. Julia. Oh, there I am again. Oh, victory at dawn! Oh, leave the picture on, please. I know just what he's saying. I don't care what he's saying. I need that drink. Hmm. Look at her. She was 19 years old and a big blinding movie star. That year, Bill Sampson fell in love with her. He was 12. He worshipped her from afar, from a second balcony in Jersey City, in love with a shadow. Well, now I'm sure he loves you for what you are. Yeah, but what are I? And which one does he want to marry? Margot today! <laughs> Or that one, Miss Eternal Second Balcony. Who's that girl with the permanent wave and the dress below her knees? Who's that doll in the open-toed pumps? Would you kindly tell me, please? Look at her, Miss 1946. <laughs> Teenage Margot, queen of the 40s flicks. Melody, who's that girl with the Maybelline eyes, acting like she knew the score? Hicks, nay, daddy-o, I never saw that girl before. Who's that girl with the permanent grin and the stockings with the seams? Get that kid with the caps on her teeth Launch a million G.I.'s dreams Where is she, that girl of yesterday? Ah, with her falsies leading Lou Ayers astray Oogie woogie, baby Who's that girl with the chic shoulder pads? Could it be that long ago? No, sir, Reba, Buriaki Saki She isn't anyone I know Bop. Who's that girl in the platform heels? Who could that tomato be? That snazzy chick, Flurdoy, Flurdoy, Drunk and Undone, Tuxedo Junction, and the pink tight suit, and the unswept hair. Woogie Woogie Doodle Boy from Company B. Knock, knock. Who's there? Me. <laughs> She's only human. Well, I'm only human. I'm going to be on that plane next Sunday. 
sweetie, be realistic. We have a contract with Howard. I need someone on my side. Buzz! Oh, gee, Margot. Gee, Buzz, you'd have to starve without those royalties for the week. Eve, tell them I'm right. I can't. I'm really thinking of you. Mr. Sampson is so busy, he wouldn't have any time together. And you might feel you were just in the way. When all of those people coming in Christmas week expecting to see Margot Channing. As I said, it's a rotten idea, and how dare you try to talk me into it. <laughs> Margot, you're a real pro. <laughs> That's show business. I wish I'd said that. Oh, Mr. Benedict, now that you're here, uh, the spotlight man has been drinking again. Now, I have reported it to the union, but I'm afraid no one but you can do anything about it. Oh, and Miss Channing's second act shoes came back dyed the wrong color. She is very unhappy and must have another pair. We sent you a note about it a week ago. I hope she's paid you plenty. You're certainly worth it. Why, thank you. Oh, and would you tell Margot we hope she can come up to the country this weekend? Yes. Yeah. You know, Karen told me you were something kind of special, right as usual. Oh, well, she told me at lunch your new play is kind of special. She says it's the best thing you've ever written. She says that about everything I write, even my tax returns. Good night. Oh, Mr. Richards hopes you'll come to Connecticut this weekend. Instead of Rome, exotic Westport. <laughs> Coming, Eve? Well, a couple of these sequins are loose. I think I'll stay a minute and tack them in place. Oh, thank you. Oh, Miss Channing, I'm sorry. Oh, you've only said what you thought was right. Good night. Oh. Margot, ever hear of the Union? Yes, we won the Civil War. I mean, the wardrobe union. She's not supposed to do that, too. Oh, of course. I'll tell her. Eve. I think you better let wardrobe take care of the wardrobe. Oh, of course. I know how touchy they are. <laughs> Oh, don't forget, 2 o'clock matinee tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Good night. Anything wrong? No. No, nothing. Miss Channing. I was hanging around to catch you. Thank you for taking my side. Oh, well, I wouldn't have said it if I hadn't read it. Join me for a drink? Well, I... I must toast the new Prime Minister. What? The power behind Queen Margot. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. You're a very interesting girl. Come on. The spotlight just down the street. The gypsies go there after the show. Gypsies? Gypsy, my dear, is the name dancers affectionately give themselves as they go camping from show to show. Hi, Mr. Benedict. How's the new musical doing in Philly? Uh, lousy book, lousy score. Naturally, everyone's blaming the costumes. <laughs> Howard! Oh, Stan. Eve, this is Stan Harding. I'm sure you read his nitwit chatter column religiously. Eve Harrington, Margot's secretary. It's so nice to meet you, Mr. Harding. shows are trying to get it. Oh, no, there's Miss Channing's understudy. Oh, yes. Why does she keep doing it? Doing what? Well, you know Bert is a very conscientious stage manager, and he's noticed that she keeps standing in the wings right where Miss Channing can see her mimicking everything she does. He's spoken to her about a dozen times, but he's beginning to lose patience. Well, here we 
go again looking for another understudy. See, Karen told me that you know every line in the play. Oh, every line, every move. That last scene in Act Two, Miss Channing makes me cry every time. Karen even suggested you, should we need a new understudy? Me? Well, would you be interested in reading, boy? I don't think so. No, no, I'm happy behind the scenes or out in the audience. <laughs> You're a pretty cool character. There are kids in this place who would kill for a chance like this. Danny. Yes, Mr. Benedict. Danny, if you were starving and had to sell something, which would you choose? Your dancing shoes or your mother? My mother. <laughs> you really love what you're doing. You know, you're very lucky. Oh, we're very lucky. Sure. Do you know we make $164.50 a week? Every week we work, that is. And by statistics, we work an average of 14 weeks a year. So minus acting classes, singing and dancing lessons, la 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 la. Equity dues, social security taxes, and cat food. Leaves about $12.15 take home pay. And it's so simple. All you have to do is study for 10 years. <laughs> and if you're lucky, your career will last another 10. <laughs> Unless you happen to break your kneecap. <laughs> but then you can always make eccentric jewelry and sell it to your friends. <laughs> Why? You tell him. No. Why you I said, what, hold a prince? My sister applauded. I've been hooked ever since. It's better than pop. It's better than blues. A shot of applause. We'll step out the blues. He went to the advance. It ain't for the bread. Call me out of my head. Bless me applause. Your bank account's bare. Your cat has a blue. You're losing your head.
بشم Applause. We thank you for the blessings of the Man, you're calling me on the set, but come on, say it. It's twelve thousand dollars a minute. Well, sure, I love you. <laughs> We know all that. Get to the point. Huh? Now, come on, Margot. I'll be a year older before you get to it. Yeah, it's your birthday. <laughs> you remembered, you sweet thing. Happy birthday, darling. Thank you. Oh, Bill. Without you, I'm beginning to climb walls, turning into a genuine crazy lady. I threatened Benedict with a breakdown if he didn't let me go to Rome for a week, but it didn't work. Oh, maybe I feel the same way. Listen, till I get back. Use up your energy on things like um, hating Emerson for upstaging you. Hey, how'd you know about that? Oh, Eve wrote me. She hasn't missed her a week since I left. She keeps me filled in on all those backstage goings on, everything you've been up to. You probably tell her what to write. Oh, sure, sure. Now, I sent her a list of my addresses on location for the next couple of weeks, so if you want to get in touch with me, check with Eve. Right. You love me. I'll check with Eve. Oh, I mean, of course I do. I wish I were with you this very minute. I read a Dutch Academy, yeah? Hi, Bill.
get you here I'll give you so much love You'll never leave me Believe me Hurry back Come back home I'm so lonely There's so much to say And so much love to make up Hurry back Hurry back I'll just die if I don't see your face beside me When I wake up your fall. Oh, hiya, Duchess. Oh, hi, Dwayne. You want some coffee? Yeah, thanks. I hope you had a good night's sleep. Eve, by any chance, did you place a call for me to bill? 9 a.m. Rome time? I forgot to tell you. That meeting in the dressing room knocked it out of my head completely. Oh, of course. Oh, well, don't worry about it. It was very thoughtful of you. Well, Mr. Sampson's birthday, I know you'd never forgive me if I forgot that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I sent him a cable myself. I saw her at the spotlight last night. She was table for doing it with everybody's favorite producer. Howard Howard? How extraordinary. <laughs> Hello? Rome? Yes, yes, go ahead. Ain't anything wrong? No! Two weeks! Ah! Ooh, you bet you'll get a coming old party. Pin the tail on the donkey. Paper hats. An orgy. <laughs> right. Love you. Wayne, two weeks. He'll be home in two <laughs> weeks. I told Bill how desperate I was. Now they're letting him bring the film and cut it here. And all because he placed that call. You don't like her, do you? But she's marvelous. She thinks only of me. Well, let's say she thinks only about you. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you dress. Oh, best night of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this an anti-climax? Jill's been home two days already. She promised him a party. You know, I've never seen Margot so nervous. She'd think it was her first prom. <laughs> she's changing her outfit for the fourth time. And she's had a martini for each change. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Eve, don't you look smashing? Oh, thank you. Miss Channing gave it to me. Now I'm really convinced. You know that idea we talked about? About your reading for the understudy? Ha, ha, ha. You've got to. Well, we'll see. Here, put this on. No, no, no. You mustn't look. Why, what is oh, it? Oh, it's a game. Bill's hooked on them. There's a famous name on it. Everyone gets one as he comes in. Um, you have to guess who you are by the way people talk to you. And you talk to them the way you would if they really were those people. You'll catch on. Yeah, come on, Carol. Let's check on the kitchen activities. <laughs> Eve, your subconscious is showing. Oh. Margot upstairs. Yes, she's dressing a little behind schedule. What, what was that you said about my subconscious? The game. Oh, yes. Yeah. I would say you have a giant brain, my good man, but the smallish beard. William Shakespeare. Nine, nine. No, nine. Uh, uh, Einstein. Oh. oh, no, no, no. He just had a mustache. Let me look and see who you are. Mm -hmm. Um... I'm surprised you came to the party. I thought you would uh, 
Van to be alone. No, no, you're not supposed to make it so simple. I'm Garbo. Who else? Oh, I guess I'm not very good at games. Oh, of course you are. Now, you're going to guess who you are if it takes all night. I can see I will simply have to lie down on this couch and tell you all about it. You see, when I was a little boy, my mother, she said to me... I know, me, I know, Sigmund Freud! <laughs> oh, no, Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Margot! Oh, Miss Janney, we were just playing the game. One of the oldest. Well, the kid here couldn't guess you was Freud. I wonder if the kid would mind checking to see why Rudy the Omelet Man isn't here. Glad to. Thank you so much. And just remember as you go through life that for every whole omelet there are two broken eggs. Margo, this looks like a party for a man who loves games, omelets, dancing, and crazy beautiful stars. He's a pretty lucky guy. Thank you, my darling. I didn't even know you were here. Oh, I ran into Eve on the way up. She said you were dressing, so. Well, that never stopped you before. Well, we started playing your sign game. You know, the kid hasn't been around to these parties much. And... Oh, she is so innocent, so unspoiled. Uh, pretty rare qualities these days. Well, she's a girl of so many rare qualities. So you've been telling me these last two days. Warm, devoted, so young and fair. <laughs> yeah, the kid's okay. Stop calling her kid. Since you've been back, you two have had so many things to talk over in corners here at the theater. God knows where else. Margot, you're hallucinating. So many things to chew over. You're trying to make films. Her trying to make you. What the hell are you talking about? I am talking about the departments in my life I want exclusively to myself. You in particular. Hands off. No trespassing. Especially from the warm, the devoted, the young, the fair. Oh, yes, of course. And I suppose this is my cue to, to grab you in my arms and drown your silly doubts in an ocean of wet kisses. I can't. I'm too damn mad. Guilty. No, no, mad. I, I turned the movie studio upside down to get back here to you. I missed you. I, I wanted you so much, but to come back to this same old fruit stand, this age obsession of yours, and now this ridiculous attempt to whip yourself up into a jealous froth because I spend, what, Ten minutes with a stage-struck kid who adores you. It shows a paranoid insecurity you ought to be ashamed of. Paranoiac. A term you picked up, no doubt, from the vivacious Dr. Freud. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Channing. The omelet man will be right in. The guests should be arriving. And I thought you might like another martini. Isn't she a treasure? I think I'll bury her. <laughs> oh, boys, boys, music, music, music for all my little friends from Madame Tussauds Waxworks. Hello, Margot. The guest of honor, Greta Garbo. Cut it out, Margot. Al Capone. Oh, Eve. Eve. Oh, you two must meet. You have so much in common. Well, there goes that game. Oh, but Howard, we can all still play the game of life. We have some win, some lose, some cheese, some lie. I can smell the sulfur in the air. What's going on? Step up, step up, folks. Continuous performance. Thrills, cheers, fears. Watch the little lady do a back bend and pick up her heart and her teeth. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Margot, is this the beginning or the end of something? Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. <laughs> I don't understand. What have I done to offend Miss Channing? It's beyond me. You've done nothing but wonders for Margo. My dear, would you perform another of your wonders? And bring me one of my hometown toddies, a double martini? And don't stick your pretty little thumb in it. I don't want to die of sugar poisoning. Fasten your seatbelts, it's gonna be a bumpy night. Eh, 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 eh. Margo in action, critics are crying.
called an awesome sight. Don't worry about Margot. These lady stars, they suffer and suffer. And we're the ones who wind up with the ulcers. Has Margot Channing ever been sick? Oh, which reminds me, Bert did fire the understudy. Too bad it's of no interest to you. I tell you what. You set up your auditions, and that day, well, maybe, just for the hell of it. Oh, the hell of it! Eve, such language! You go straight to your room. The one in Madison, Wisconsin. You look lovely in that dress. So smart, you had your eye on it from the beginning. I'm so glad I gave it to you. Anything else you have your eye on? Oh, come on. Dump, 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 da 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 on to the next game. Why don't you all choose up sides and go home? Thanks for the party. I can't believe it. I gotta be in that cutting room at 8 a.m. Oh, don't get up. You needn't act as if I were the queen mother. Well, I'm sorry. Outside of a beehive, I wouldn't consider your behavior either queenly or motherly. Margot, it's time you realize that what's attractive on stage is not necessarily attractive off. I haven't your unfailing good taste. I wish I had gone to Radcliffe too, but father needed my help at the fish market. Cut it off. This is my house, not a theater. You're a guest, not a director. Then stop being a star. And stop treating your friends as your supporting cast. Supporting? Oh, that's a joke. All of you living off my hide. My charisma. La ca charisma, la ca charisma. Ga 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 la la here, fry this. Now hear it? Hear it? This is your captain speaking. Fasten your seatbelts. It's really been a bumpy night. I've got a secret. I think I'm just a wee bit shy. Oh, oh, look at this star. This star has fallen. Her parachute wouldn't open. Eve must have packed it. Nothing will ever grow here again. Oh, the party is thinning out. Down to my closest friends. Was Bill mad? You were the worst. I'll call him. Maybe I won't. Maybe I will. I'm sorry I behaved badly. No, I'm not. My friend should know that isn't the real me. Yes, it is. I am the worst. Well, not always. 
Sometimes I'm adorable. I'm a thousand different people. Every single one is real. I'm a million different feelings. Okay, but at least I feel. At least I on display, an ornament, a Tiffany glass bottle with nothing inside. There is something inside. What do you want? Nothing from you. I found someone who held that bottle up to the light, rubbed it in the right places, said some delicious magic words, and out popped the genie, me. And I'm never going back in. I like it out here. Oh. It was it was like hearing my play for the first time. Oh, Mr. Richards. Uh, hearing it read by someone who's really, well, the youth, the vitality. Oh, Eve, I know I'm supposed to butt out, but I can't. I feel so proud. Oh, thank you, that Karen. It was a hell of a first reading. After watching Margot all these months, it wasn't an imitation. You made it your own. I'm very impressed. Oh, Mr. Samson, I was petrified. Uh, Bert, there's no point in reading anyone else. Miss Harrington has the job. Uh, Eve? Welcome to the theater. Oh, welcome aboard! Oh, oh, well, who's welcoming who to what? Margot, it's after three. Oh, well, it just so happens I was having a luncheon interview in connection with this very play we're all living on. It ran a bit late. I'm truly sorry. Hello. <laughs> oh, come on. We're not going to stay angry with each other because of the other night. Well, shall we begin? It's over. Oh? And who has the splendid job of standing by for the star who never misses a performance? Knock on wood. Eve. 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 Well. I always knew you were interested in the theater. And in me. But I had no idea. Oh, yes, a Madison Dramatic Society, Pinta, Orby. Miss Channing, I can't tell you how relieved I am you arrived so late. I would have dried up completely. I could never have gone on. She you... gave a hell of a reading. You would have been proud of her, too. Oh? And, uh, and were you proud of her, Bill? Yes. I must say, she really is an actress. It was a pleasant surprise. Surprise? Oh, I'm the only one in this group who's had a surprise. Little surprises being planned behind my back. Cut that, Margo. No one's kept anything from you. We asked you to be here. A pure formality. I'm sure all this was decided amongst you kiddies days and days ago. Or perhaps, Howard, during one of those magical evenings when you and Eve were dancing the night away. That's enough. Send me your objections in writing. You haven't got understudy approval in your contract in the first place. Bill, I want to see you for a minute. I can't get over it. This little prairie flower has been standing in the wings, studying my every line, every move for five months, and I never saw what she was really up to. Hey, let's get this settled. I was surprised, too. She was a revelation. Oh, naturally. It must have been a revelation to have a somewhat younger character played by somewhat younger actors. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, it must have sounded so new and fresh to you. I'm sure you could hardly recognize your own play. The play is actor-proof. Actor-proof? If you knew the bits, the shtick I have to dredge out of the vaudeville trunk to give the illusion something amusing is going on. You empty-headed, conceited, Fiddle. You're nothing but a body and a voice. Don't ever forget, I'm the brain. Tell the autopsy there's no proof. Why have you been kicking us all around long enough? Someone ought to give you a good swift one for a change. Miss Channing, if I ever dreamed that anything I did could possibly cause you any unhappiness or come between you and your friends. Please. 
Please. Believe me. Oh, I do. And I'm full of admiration for you. If you can handle yourself on the stage with the same artistry you display off the stage, well, my dear, you are in the right place. Welcome to the theater, to the magic, to the fun, where painted trees and flowers grow and laughter rings fortissimo and treachery sweetly dies. You've entered the asylum, this profession unique. Actors are children playing hide and ego seek. So welcome, Miss Eve Harrington, to this business we call show. But they'll know your name from New York to Kokomo. Welcome to the theater. My dear, you'll love it so. Welcome to the dirty concrete hallways. Welcome to the friendly roaches, too. Welcome to the pinches from the stage. It's the only quiet thing they do. Welcome to the Philadelphia critics. Welcome, Librium and Nebutal. Welcome to a life of laryngitis. Welcome to dark toilets in the hall. Welcome to the flop you thought would run for years. Welcome to the world of fears and cheers. and a voice. What a body. What a voice. Imagine. She turns up out of nowhere and gives a performance. A reading. A performance. Margot, you've got to stop hurting yourself. And me. The two of us. I'm in a dream I... scene in one of those movies. I am screaming into an empty tunnel. I love you. No one can hear me. You're no one will listen actress to me. At the peak of her career. All the time she's coming at me with a knife. Margot. Why can't you see it? Margot. Oh. There are always young, talented people coming along, but you're you. You're unique. No one can possibly be a threat to you. It's beneath you to let an innocent girl like Eve turn you into a screaming harpy. She turns me into a heavy. Ah. She's Snow White. And you're all those cute little dwarfs. Now I wind up as the Wicked Witch. Why can't I be Snow White for a change? <laughs> okay, okay, anything. Bong, the fight's over. <sighs> calm down. I will not calm down. Don't calm down. Oh, you're being very tolerant, aren't you? Well, I am trying. Well, I don't want to be tolerated. Oh, plotted against. Get her out of my life! You think she's talented? Fine, help her. Get her a job in a touring company. A film in Lebanon. Let her run around naked off Broadway someplace, any place. Just away from me and away from you. Are you still on that? You can't possibly believe. What am I supposed to believe? This girl turns up out of nowhere, inexperienced, amateur at best, gives up a performance that knocks everybody out. Rehearsed, I have no doubt, over and over, day and night, full of those personal, unmistakable Bill Sampson touches. 
Damn it, I've had it. I'm sick to death of your paranoid outbursts. So oh, annoying! What a hang up on a word! I don't even know what it means! Well, it's time you found out. Go to an analyst. Go to hell! We usually wind up screaming and throwing things as the curtain comes down. But when it comes up, everything's fine. But not this time. Goodbye, Margot. Where are you going, Biff? Mustn't keep the kid waiting. Paranoia. Just a minute. Eve, it's for you. Hello? Eve? I'm still in Connecticut. Don't faint. Don't say a word. You're definitely going on tonight. <laughs> I told you I'd find a way. Now listen. Buzz and Marco just left for the train station, but they'll never get there. No gas in the car. <laughs> I emptied it. It can't go more than a mile. Oh, Eve, there's no need to feel guilty. You simply said the most direct way to show Margot was have the curtain. No go. How much time have we? Uh, roughly ten minutes. How far to the station? Oh, it's about three or four miles. We'll never make the train. So I'm finally going to miss a performance. How fortunate I am to have an understudy so ready, so willing, and so able to go on. Oh, I'm sorry, Buzz. I haven't been very pleasant this weekend. It was nice of you and Karen to ask the body and the voice after all the rotten things she said about the brain. Margot, there are times I'd like to murder you, but only temporarily. We know you too well. Hmm. I wish I knew me. What is a Margot Channing? Besides a name spelled out in light bulbs. Besides something called a temperament. Infants behave the way I do, you know. They carry on and misbehave. They'd get drunk if they knew how. When they feel unwanted or insecure. Or unloved. What about Bill? More than anything in this world, I love Bill. And I want Bill. But... Oh, Buzz. Be glad you didn't fall in love with an actress. Hey. We better start walking back towards the house. All right, but you better stand back, because at eight thirty I start doing the play, no matter where I am. <laughs> hey, <come on! laughs> hey, come on, bring it up again. Okay, folks, that's it. <laughs> Baby, you were beautiful. Mm. Terrific. It's like you've been playing it forever. Mm. You didn't make a wrong thank move. You, thank you. Come on out with us. We'll celebrate. Oh, thank you, but I really can't. Terrific, Eve. Oh, Mr. Harding, did you hear that? Did you hear that audience? Stardust time, believe me. You... Call me at the office in half an hour. I want to get some quotes from you for my column. I'll call. Well, I have to admit it. You weld them. Why, thank you, Dwayne. But how come the columnists and the critics turned up? Well, little birdie must have told them. Maybe a vulture. Hello! Hey, hey, hey. Terrific, wasn't you, Mr. Sampson? Yes, you were. I'll, uh, 
I'll wait for you, Eve. Oh, well, I, I don't think so, Bert. I feel... Huh? <laughs> you know. Yeah, I... Good night. None of the earmarks of a one-shot performance. It's there. Oh, it's you know, I've been spending all my time splicing strips of film together in a dark little room, almost forgot what live theater can be. The excitement when someone up there makes contact with the audience. <laughs> Have a good time tonight. You deserve it. Good night, Eve. Bill? Yeah? Thank you. I could never have done it without you. Without me? No, oh, I came back and gave you a five-minute pep talk before the curtain went up. Oh, no. Something you said made all the difference. Without it, I might have been just plain embarrassing. Really? What was that? Well, you said the one thing that makes an audience uncomfortable is to see an actor pressing, sweating to make good. You said, if you feel you're losing them, don't panic. Hold very still inside. Don't go after them. Make them come to you. And that's what did it. Oh, I held on to that as if I were holding on to you. It meant everything to me. And so do you. Well, that's a fairly comprehensive statement. You remember the night Greta Garbo met Sigmund Freud? Well, I think it's time Bill Sampson met Eve Harrington. You're quite a girl. You think? Then I've got a girl, remember Margot? I'll never forget her. That's how I met you. Anyway, you're not together at the moment. Maybe this is my moment. You mean our moment? Let's find out. The only thing is, you're pressing. I think you lost me. I remember Eve off stage as well as on. Don't go after them. Make them come to you. Lucky producer. The understudy went on tonight and wowed them, just like in the old Ruby Keeler movies. Oh, I'm so glad you came back. In all the excitement, I forgot to thank you for the lovely flowers. My pleasure. Are you still free? I've had a change in plans. Great. Then we shall celebrate. My apartment. Oh, no. I'd rather have a drink at Sardi's. Eve. You're a very clever girl. I came through for you, giving you the understudy. Well, didn't I come through for you? By giving a good performance? We are friends, aren't we? Oh, yes. Heaven knows we're friends. Well, I have no illusions about tonight. It was just one performance. It could be forgotten tomorrow. Not necessarily. After Margot leaves, I could give you a crack at taking over the rope. I don't want her hand-me-downs. You've grown up considerably in your esteem in the last three seconds. Oh, well, I'm sorry to sound so unappreciative. But if I'm to go on with this... I want a part of my own. Or nothing. Perhaps even something like that could be arranged. A little higher with the cup. That's it. Now, how about that famous look? Good! Great! Oh, thank you, Miss Chan. That was beautiful. A uh, hairdresser, please. All right, now, darling, look. Now, we've taken care of the master shot. Now, all we have to do is do a close-up of you with you holding the cup and exactly... Peter, couldn't we finish this tomorrow? This stuck on the Connecticut last night and running in this morning. Well, you know that's out of the question. They're here. Get it over with. I don't want you to blow this. Yes, I know. It's dignified. It's got residuals. It's security for my old age. Which, according to the morning's paper, I'm in the middle of right now. Oh, I can't believe Eve would say those things. 
Miss Harrington, while restating her admiration for Miss Channing, lamented the fact that mature actresses can be so self-deluded they keep playing younger parts with detrimental results to the play. Detrimental, self-deluded. Does that sound like Stan Harding? And listen to this. Miss Harrington was a radiant, natural young angel up there tonight. Quite a difference from Miss Channing, cleverly bundled up in her high neck gowns designed to conceal, and discreetly lit with all the pink gelatins in town to create the illusion of youth. My God, she wore my costumes. The lighting was exactly the same. It's so rotten, so unfair. Uh, can we go, Miss Channing? Oh, oh, yes, I guess we better. It'll be all over town. I'm too feeble to work. Okay, fellas, let's get in there with that one-of-a-kind coffee. Let's catch this one-of-a-kind profile before it crumbles. Oh, I'm sorry. Margo. Yeah? I read that piece of garbage. It's not even worth a tear. And you were right about that girl. Oh, Bill, I am so tired. Look, these things happen. Why don't we leave everything here and pick those two shots up tomorrow, huh? Yes, do it tomorrow. That's uh, my suggestion. Oh, Bill, I'm so glad you're here. She's had a terrible morning. I had no idea that... Well, now you're here. Mark, is this anything at all you want when you call me? Call me later. I just dropped in because I wanted a cup of coffee. Come on, Margo. I want that coffee, and I want it poured by you, right now. All right. We're rolling. Take one, Margot Sad. Cut! Perfect. Take two, Margot Glad. Cut! Nothing. No, you're not doing it right, darling. <clears throat> I want big smile. Plenty teeth. More? More? <laughs> no, not insanity. Cut. Oh, uh, I've got an easy one for you. Margot, sexy. Margot no feel sexy. Margot sad. Sad Margot. <laughs> Evil Margot. Margot the wicked witch. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. You're everything the slogan promises. <laughs> You are one of a kind, a fabulous bird. You're out of your mind, a way out of sight. You're one of a kind, unique is the word, and that's why I find the others all trite. I like the weird things that happen inside of your skull. Being with you may be hard on the nerves, but it's never dull. Oh, no, never dull. You walk in a room and people all stare Cause baby you bloom, they'd have to be blind To not recognize the rarest of rare Right under their eyes, you're one of a kind If there were two of you Or God forbid a few of you Too much is what it would be but you're one of a kind, one of a kind, one of a kind, one of a kind. And you're the kind of a woman for me. Who else would take a swim completely dressed in Central Park at 3 a.m. the night she won the Tony? I didn't do that. Yes, you did. Who grabbed a flaming cherry's jubilee and burned a movie script at Trayson's yelling it was phony. Was that me? Uh-huh. You You're always were a crazy, crazy kid. kid. I, I shudder at the things, things you did. Your ego seems to suit my head. So kiss me! You mad fool! You know you grind your teeth at night. Your snoring is a real delight. It's noisy, but we sleep all right. <laughs> you are one of a kind, a fabulous bird. You're out of your mind and way out of sight. You're one of a kind, unique as the word. And that's why I find the others all trite. At times, you're self and stubborn and blind as a mole but even so you're a kick to be with you're good for my soul so good for my soul you walk in a room and people all scared because maybe you bloom they'd have to be blind to not recognize the rarest of rare right under their eyes you're one of a kind if there were two 
of you. Oh, God forbid a few of you. Too much is what it would be. But you're one of a kind, one of a kind, one of a kind, one of a kind, and you're the kind of a nut. <laughs> Bill. Mm-hmm. Bill, tell me one thing. What? Was she good? Who? Well, you were there last night. Eve. Was she that good? Forget it. But was she? Yes. She was good. So that's what you're thinking? Well, I can't very well help it, can I? I'm kissing you, I'm thinking nothing but you, and that's what's running around in your mind? Oh, no. No, you and me, that's on my mind, too. <laughs> yeah, in a bottom drawer someplace. Well, you certainly know how to make a fellow feel wanted and loved. <laughs> what the hell's the matter with me? Why do I keep coming back and getting kicked at the teeth? <sighs> because I keep thinking each time, it'll be different. You're gonna change. But I don't want you to change, Bill. I, I want you just as you are. Oh, I missed you so. Who else is there to catch me every time I fall off the high wire? Do me a favor, Bill. Marry me. No. You don't need me, my love. You need a safety net. The answer is no. Oh, well, I always knew you'd get cold feet if I ever really said... For the first time, I'm facing it honestly. Why should you change? How can you? A lifetime of conditioning since you were 19, defending your own little place up on top. That's a full-time job. Marrying you would be bigamy. You're already married. You are a star. And that comes first. Well, what do you want? A little wifey-poo waiting for you in the kitchen, knee-deep in lasagna? Yeah, I guess I do. No, I don't. Because then it wouldn't be you. And you're the one I love. I'd be miserable, and damn it, there isn't any solution. Go take a nap. You must be exhausted. You do have to face your public in a couple of hours. Oh, yes, you're right. And I'd better look particularly dazzling tonight. Will you pick me up afterwards? I'm working late. Oh, when will I see you? I don't know. Bill. I love you. I wish you could realize what a rival a fella has in you. I just... Don't understand. <laughs> I'm just beginning to understand it. I helped get rid of the understudy. Two weeks ago, you go on for Margot. Big success. Yeah, then it's goodbye, Bert. I've served my purpose. And you should be glad I'm leaving. Then you struck out with Bill Sampson. Moved in fast on Buzz Richards. Oh, that is foolish, dangerous gossip. You could hurt a lot of people with lies like that. Goodbye, Bert. Well, good luck. Don't worry. I'll be back in this theater or another. And with my own understudy. You're quite a girl. for someone? No, no, no. I, uh, I, I, I was just, uh, <laughs> how's the show going? We ought to sell tickets to what goes on after the show.
Steve. I got delayed finishing the rewrites in Act One. The ones we talked about last night. My God, I couldn't sleep thinking about the way you read, Leslie. The more I work on it, the more I know the girl is you. Oh, I know. I feel it, too. The play's ready to go, and Howard doesn't want Margot to leave this one. So what can stand in the way? <laughs> and listen, no more meeting like this. Starting tomorrow night, we have the Reeves apartment. Matching keys. His and hers. You may not like the paintings too much. Lots of little orphans with big eyes. But I guess we won't be looking at them much. I just can't figure what the hell you see in me. She's alive, she's alive, so alive. I'm wound up like a spring that's been tightened. Dreamy and dizzy, but not a bit frightened. I'm alive, I'm alive, so alive. Everybody loves the winner, but nobody loves the plump. No one worries how you got there once you're standing on the so I feel up and together and steady, eager, excited, so come on, I'm ready, ready for the climb, baby, it's my time, you believe it, I'm alive, alive. Hello. How long have you... Been... Long enough. I've never seen you caught off guard before. Oh, Howard, there's nothing to hide. Something wonderful has happened to me. We've fallen in love. He's rewriting Leslie for me, and it's getting pretty serious. Of course, I feel awful about Karen. Yes, yes, of course. That makes it tough. Well, that better be going. If there's a wedding license, don't forget to write to Evelyn Hinkle. That is your name, isn't it? Oh, yes, what about it? I've done a bit of research on you. That whole pathetic lost soul autobiography. Very touching. But a complete lie from beginning to end. I had to get in to see Margot. I had to make them like me. They liked you all right. What have you done for them in return? <laughs> the bodies are piling up. 
I don't want mine among them. How would Buzz and I... Forget about Buzz and I. It's you and I. Oh, well, it was you and I, Howard, but that was for one night with Buzz. I really love him. Don't you think your future with Buzz could be complicated by his hearing about your current activities? Hopscotch to the top, from bed to bed. Bert, Stan Buzz Harding... Buzz loves me. me. I can explain all that. Really? Can you explain this simple fact? Your husband wasn't killed in the war. He's still very much alive. What do you want? You. Until I start yawning. I want you to let Buzz down gently. Take a week or so. I want a playwright, not a blubbering wreck. And if you're a very good girl, we'll see about the part in the play. Come here. Come here. Don't clench your teeth when I kiss you. Eve, we both know what you want. And you know I can get it for you, don't you? Don't you? Well, here, take a taxi, get your things. Be at my place in an hour. And um, if I'm not there, Wait. The play is mine. The part of Leslie was written for me. It's always been understood. Boz couldn't have agreed to this. And Bill, is he directing it with her? You'd know better than anyone. Oh, would I? I haven't seen him in weeks. That part was the only thing in my future. Now, where am I? Sweetie, it's not the end of the world. Maybe not for you. Get it straight, Peter. This is it. This is my whole life. Can't you do something about it? We have nothing in writing. What can I do? Oh, go home and have a good dinner. You look tired. Thanks, Margo. Good night. Hey, um, you aren't going to be her hairdresser, are you? Only when she's laid out. How am I going to stop her? How can you when she's got the author in her pocket? Well, in her bed. Buzz and Eve? Well, it's practically been a headline in Variety. Margo? Oh, Karen! Oh, I'm glad you're still here. Hi, Dwayne. Hi. Hey, uh, I, I'd better cut out. I'll see you at half hour. And make sure you eat something. I will. Hello. What's a good word? Who said that? I never say things like that. Oh, would you like a shrimp? Some steak? Can I get you a drink? Oh, yeah. Scotch, gin, cooking sherry, anything. Margot, justice is not dead. Oh, Retribution, good. punishment for sin. Margot, your little Radcliffe girl emptied that gas tank. You and the gas tank. It took me a whole day to figure that out. I just heard about Boss. Oh. <laughs> you marry a funny-looking, lovable little playwright. Put him through college, sharpen his pencil, pretend to like his early play. And then, suddenly, oh, Marco, I'll kill them. I'll kill them both. <laughs> You've certainly come to an expert. 
I've lost every man who ever came into my life, including the only one I really loved. <laughs> well, what do we do? Oh, I know exactly what you do. Nothing. Huh? Eve doesn't want your playwright husband. She wants his play. She'd do all this for a part in a play? Right. Sit still and wait. Wait? That's no way to fight a woman oh, like her. Listen to me on this subject. I really am an expert. Boz is just one step up for her. Those claws are already dug in for the next jump, and jump she will no matter whose body is in the way. And if she's talented, she'll get there. But staying there, that's the backbreaker. That's the full-time job. You know, I almost feel sorry for Eve. Because in the end, she'll wind up empty and alone, married to herself, fighting for parts she's no longer right for. Oh, well. No wonder I'm such an expert on the subject. It's me. No! Well, you must admit there's a faint resemblance, no. and I don't like it. Oh, Karen, I've got to do something about it. And I've got to go right home and do... Nothing. Right. Karen. Karen. Yes? Have you got a good recipe for lasagna? What? I'll call you. I want to have a future instead of just a past. Hooray for more! Scrapbook full of clippings of things long forgotten. There's something lingering. A picture in the paper that makes you look rotten. There's something greater. Adoring you blindly. There's something greater, there's something greater. My friends who know you're lonely and treat you too kindly. There's something greater, there's something greater. There's meaning to be where he is. Waking up and there he is. Being to your man what a woman should be. I should have protected you from that girl. She's a... No, don't say a word against her. And let the kid have the part. If it weren't for her, I would have lost you. Eve, you four-star bitch! Thank you!
Well, what can one do to Cyrus Longworth now? Well, that is an interesting theoretical question. Jagger, where is he? You know. Oh, no, now you're going to accuse me of being a, a burglar. Well, uh, Cyrus can explain all that. Can he now? Yes, he gave me the combination of the safe. I'm keeping some of my belongings and valuables there. You no, know, I don't believe a word you're saying. Now, where is he? Keep saying that. And I'm going to keep saying it and keep asking it until I get an answer. Or until Cyrus Longworth walks down those stairs. <laughs> Get between your kids and drugs any way you can if you want to save the kid's life. I can't believe it. She knew all about me. And all I told her was my name and my birth date. It was amazing. She saw me back in school, and I just sent for a training course. She told me that I had got a promotion on my job, and that's true. And the sample reading is free. One of the most incredible things that she asked me was if I had a fear of water. And it's true. It's like they've known you your whole life. I just planned a trip to Europe this summer. This is really true. She said I'd meet a tall Mediterranean man. I asked my psychic about children in my future, and she saw two, possibly twins. When I asked my psychic about the relationship I'm in now, she said not only will it last, but it's going to a higher level. Get your free 10 minutes now from Psychic Readers Network. Get the free time you need. Call now for 10 minutes free. PRN has the best psychics. You get a great reading, and it's free. Why do you think I let you call from my house? Get your 10 minutes free. <laughs> call now. Call 1-800-376-8465. Hi, I'm Wes Craven, and you're watching the Sci-Fi Channel. I am the Sci-Fi Channel. Friday, I will explore your limits in the dimension of darkness. At 7, a 60 sci-fi classic comes to a bizarre end on She-Wolf of London.